What's up world, Sevi here, and welcome back to my birdhouse. In today's topic, we're going to be covering bird housing. Specifically, looking into our pet pigeons and doves, I will not be covering any sort of parrot, chicken, or any other fowl, uh, simply because this is not what our channel is focused on. So, today we're going to be looking at different types of housing, different types of enrichment within the housing, access to fresh food and water, and we're specifically going to be looking at birds which are housed inside the home, though I will have a small section on birds which are housed outdoors in aviaries or large setups. Before we move on with the rest of today's video, I just want to put a little disclaimer in here. I am in no way a vet or an avian specialist. The advice and information I give out in my videos is simply my own experiences and knowledge that I have gained over the years from keeping birds. If at any point you feel you need professional help or advice, please consult your avian vet. First thing I want to start off with our indoor housing section and that is just basic indoor cages. Now everyone has different cages, everyone has different birds, different requirements. Uh, but for the majority, our cages should be comfortable for our birds, large enough for our birds to move around in, and yeah, let's get going. So first of all, I'm showing off in this first clip a clip of my bird condo, or at least I call it the condo. It has two sections, a top and a bottom. Now please, before you go and write in the comments all angry, no, nah, this cage is too small, please understand that my birds are allowed free roam in the house. As you can hear, Salty is in the background of this recording and he is currently flying around my editing setup. My birds get plenty of time, up to eight, eight to six hours a day out of their cages. This involves them roaming my house, sitting watching TV with me or even stalking me in the bathroom whilst I'm, uh, you know, trying to do my business. So this means that my birds get plenty of outside cage time and I wouldn't recommend putting your birds in any sort of small cage for a long period of time as they are animals, they need their space, they need to fly, flap their wings and do all things bird related. So when it comes to housing, please just look at the size of your cages. If this is going to be like a permanent cage where your bird is going to be spending most of its daytime in, I do suggest that your cage is really large. Now pigeons in general prefer cages that are wider than taller. And the reason why is because pigeons like to fly from perch to perch. They don't have like the same claws and feet as a parrot would that they can climb up against the side of the bars or up onto their sticks. So they do need space to jump and fly between perches. Also just a reminder that our housing needs to be safe for our animals. So you know predators, any sort of pests like rats perhaps or even the other birds in your household. Like I wouldn't be keeping my pigeons and my parrots in the same room simply because those parrots hook beaks can do quite a bit of damage pretty quickly to a pigeon. Also something that we need to look at is if this house is going to be a permanent house for it where this bird is going to be staying for the majority of the day, just please make sure that it is well ventilated, well lit and that your birds will have access to fresh air and food and water. I know it might seem like a bit of a redundant thing to say but it is important as I have seen some people, especially online, who don't seem to quite grasp that concept and they keep their birds in small dark rooms in dog crates their entire lives, which is a little bit unfair. Now I know a lot of people love to use dog crates, I think it's really awesome. My condo is a bit different because I bought it from a pet shop and then modified it to fit for my needs. But dog crates work really good for your evening hours or sleeping time or perhaps when you are out from the house and you're not there to monitor your birds. I wouldn't leave your birds free room in the house without you being there. Supervision is key. Also, we need to understand that our birds need a bit of enrichment. So if you are going to be keeping your bird in any sort of housing or cage for a prolonged period of time, even if, say, they do have free room time in the house, it is a good idea just to give them some sort of enrichment to keep themselves busy. So yeah, that's all I want to mention, just a brief little overlook on housing and we'll be going into a little bit more detail regarding this in our next clip. Next clip here, I'm just sewing off my little crate that I use for quarantine birds or like a temporary sort of housing situation. Those of you who follow us on Facebook, you'll know that recently we got a new addition to our flock and that is Aqua. They have passed their quarantine stage and are now just staying inside the small little crate just for the time being because they are still being hand fed and once they are large enough and strong enough and are looking good, they've picked up a lot of weight and are ready to be integrated into my flock, they'll be going out to the farm where we have our large aviaries and will be integrated into the flock. 
This cage is also a perfect example of a quote-unquote dog crate, even although this is a bird cage, but you do get dog crates of similar sizes. And this is a perfect kind of cage for if your bird is spending, say, mornings and evening time in the cage, and then during the day are allowed free roam of the house. One thing to note about this cage is it does have a wire mesh floor. This mesh is very wide and I do find that their feet can actually like their little toes can dangle through this mesh. So what I do is I normally just put a bit of cardboard and then the newspaper on top just to try and prevent any injury to feet. You can also do this with your dog crates. You can even put down say an old towel down just to cushion those feet so that they don't get stuck in between the wires. In this next clip here, I'm just showing off some of our travel cages, which I always have on hand. You never know when you need to quickly zip down to the vet, or if in an emergency situation, you need to get the birds into a cage and get out of the house. Uh, this red cage is currently Salty's cage at the moment, since at the moment Haley is in the condo where Salty normally lives. This is not a permanent arrangement, this is just temporary whilst Haley is with us for some training. I also have a smaller hamster cage, which well originally was a hamster cage, which I've now started using for the birds. This little small crate is really perfect for just, you know, especially the laughing doves, putting them in, taking them to the vet. I would never, ever, ever recommend this as even like a sleeping time cage because it's far too small. The bird can't even open its wings in there to stretch it. But for trips to the vet and for emergencies, this would be a perfect little travel cage. Just watching Salty here getting in and out of the travel cage. Uh, just a FYI, yes, there's no food and water bowls that you can see in these clips. I have just finished washing them. They're not dry yet. Don't worry, I will be putting them back shortly. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, every bird is an individual. Some prefer much larger cages. Some are fine with just a small dog crate. And in Vanilla's instance, this is the cage that she decided was her cage. She will literally go in and out of this cage on her own accord. Same when I let her out for her time to roam around the house. I know it's a little bit small to be a quote unquote permanent cage for her. However, she too gets a lot of free roam time in the house and she really does prefer this cage. Do not ask me why, I have no idea. But she's been living in this cage since she was about not even a year old. Back when I had to keep her in the house because she had to be, you know, tube fed and really looked after to the vet every second week because of health problems and I think she just kind of became attached to this little cage and unfortunately she refuses to leave it. I tried to get her into the bird condo at one stage and she would literally sit in the corner and sulk. So don't ask me why, this was the little cage of choice and I'm not going to argue with her, she is welcome to live in this cage for as long as she likes. So the last thing we're going to be looking at is outdoor cages or housing. So it is raining a little bit today, so this might be a bit of a shorter clip here. But this is our outside cage. It's specifically for Pepper. Um, I find this works really well. It has good protection from the weather because the whole back end of it is covered in metal. The front has a latch and a little carabiner that I clip just for in case, you know, you never want that latch to come loose and suddenly Pepper is out. And yeah, the inside is quite large and spacious. He has several sticks in here that he can choose which and where he wants to sit. I do have the box in the lower left hand corner just in case of shelter. A good note is that it does have a mesh flooring. I haven't placed anything on top of this mesh as I have found Pepper spends majority of his day on his sticks. However, if you do have a bird that is more, you know, orientated on the ground, it might be a good idea to put down a mat or a carpet here. A good thing to note about this outdoor cage is it is predator proof. It is also pest proof. These uh, meshes are far too thin for anything to get their claws in to potentially attack my bird. And it is something that we must all be aware of is the cage protected from the elements, is the cage predator proof. Will this cage be sufficient for my bird to be living outside permanently? And if it checks all those boxes, that's great. I believe then it is an excellent cage for your outside bird. However, if it is not checking all those boxes, it's definitely something that I feel you should review. Unfortunately, I don't have any clips of my large aviaries on the farm at the moment since I'm not currently there. However, if you do pop into our Facebook page, I'm sure you'll check those cages out. I believe they did feature in our 2022 Christmas videos where you can see the cages are very long. 
they are, although they are tall, they are longer than they are tall. There's only four birds per cage, so it gives it quite a lot of space for the birds to fly around and exercise and sit on the perches or on the floor if they so choose. Those cages are also cemented down into the ground, which means there's no possible way for any sort of pest or potential a predator or even snakes, because you know it is on a farm, getting into that cage and potentially harming those birds. They are more covered on the top since the summers tend to be excessively hot there and although there is the tree cover it doesn't help too much so I did have to cover them a little bit more just to help my birds with the heat. Uh, actually you know what I think I'm just gonna be inserting a clip which you are probably watching right now a little bit of those cages or an image or something just to give you a bit of a, a visual. And yeah that is all that I think need to cover on the basics of housing. I did do a post last year, I think it was three or four posts on our bird info care section which is pinned to the top of our Facebook page, a little PDF document there if you feel like going and reading up on it. And that's going to be all for today. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this conversational video format that we got going on here. Please don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. Stay tuned to our channel as we're going to have plenty of more videos coming up every Thursday. And yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day.